we're talking about the speed of development in here, so I thought it'd be interesting to really quickly fix that bug, and then also kind of just uh, answer questions um, about Gun Game if you got to see it, and then maybe even show you a little bit of the inner workings. So I'm gonna quickly search for my spawn points here using the, uh, the hierarchy. So I have a big folder of them. I'm gonna turn off some other stuff and turn on only my spawn points super quickly. And I have a lot of them. So let's go find the one that's broken. Turn off my UI. Okay, yeah. So <clears throat> I, um, I've been uh, making little games and, and messing around in, in different engines and working in the game industry for a little while. And uh, when we started working on this project, I was really super excited. Uh, I think it was in one of these walls over here is where Jordan spawned. I was super excited because it just, um, even, even being experienced in making games um, for quite some time, uh, there's always a lot of hurdles, uh, especially around like publishing. Is, even if you've made a game and you had people to make art and you had um, engineers to help you or you did it yourself uh, using a, a, you know, a marketplace assets or something, there's always this like hurdle of like publishing and sharing, um, especially with multiplayer games. It gets very difficult right around uh, that point of development where you're wanting to start playtesting and stuff. And so to have core uh, is like kind of, it's kind of out of this world. Like it really is um, kind of next level. And so we, we, we were doing game jams internally and, and making things and having fun and iterating on a lot of different stuff. And uh, I, don't, I don't see the spawn point here that Jordan was talking about. Um, we, we were iterating on stuff and, and playing lots of games, making lots of games, and it was just like it's some of the most fun I've had in a long time in game development in general, not just in art. Um, so uh, early on in one of the game jams, I made Gun Game. <clears throat> very, very basic. Um, for those of you who don't know, Gun Game is, like Jordan briefly explained it, it's, uh, it's a basically a race to the top. Um, so the first person to like 10 kills wins, and every time you get a kill, you get a worse and worse gun, or a gun that's harder and harder to use. And it's an old Counter-Strike mod, I believe, is where it originated from. Um, kind of harkening back to, like, like Jordan mentioned and Frederick mentioned, our love of like modding and mods in general, and um, being able to kind of like take a game idea and build upon it and, and enhance it a little further. So I kind of took that. It was just very simple guns at first. Um, and then with each iteration of Game Jam and messing around with it, I kind of tried to improve the, the loop a little bit, make it a little more fun. Um, I made this map, and uh, one of the other environment artists helped me art it, art it out nicer. And uh, I have some areas that are in progress still, you can see here, um, parts that are still getting fleshed out um, and worked on. But um, so yeah. Just to clarify, John, so you uh, did all of the game design yourself, and then it was just uh, one other artist who did the environment with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, uh, like I said, I made the the game loop really quickly. Just I learned I learned Lua kind of early on when we started the project. Kind of picked up Lua. It's again super easy to learn. I think um, if you're as far as like learning different languages, I, I knew a little bit of some some scripting stuff, but nothing. I would definitely not say I'm an engineer in any way. But um, now I feel really confident in Lua just after you know months of using it uh, on and off, and that's really been powerful inside of Core, but you definitely don't need it at all because uh, one of the other engineers here made a framework for gun game that basically handles the basic loop of you have a list of guns that you play and every time you get a kill you'll go up a gun or down a gun in the list. So you could actually make your own gun game right now fairly easily just by replacing it with different guns, you know, tuning some values if you thought you, you had a, a design sense that you liked or a pace you liked. You could, you could make all the guns super shoot, shoot super fast or super slow or do tons of damage or not. And, have it kind of just be a crazy free-for-all um, really quickly, actually. And uh, that's, that's sort of like the beauty of Core, honestly, um, is that we're, we're always going to be expanding our catalog. We're always going to be trying to make more frameworks. We're always going to be trying to like, give everybody the, the best tools they can to, to make what they want to make. Awesome. Um, I actually just noticed that I blocked this off on accident. So I'll fix that last night. Last night I was adding to the map a little bit and messing around in my free time. Um, adding some more set dressing to the map. Um, yeah, I can actually open up the, the, Lua, the Lua if you want to see it. If anybody is interested, I know I, know I saw a lot of questions in chat just prior to this about, about what, what language do we use, um, what, uh, what, 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 what can be done inside of Core um, without any coding knowledge versus what can be done with a little bit of coding knowledge. I'm going to just open up a different text editor here real quick. 
and um, oops, wrong folder. And I have to say, um, mm -hmm. I think one of my favorite features in Silly Gun Game is the hats. Yeah. And those were actually added pretty late in the development, or at least I remember having a lot of play tests without them. Yeah, totally. So <laughs> that, that was one of the fun things is like the game was pretty fun loop, just like kind of, you know, just gun game, it's, but it's just a shooter and not everybody's good at shooters. Uh, and that's okay, you know. Um, so I wanted to make a shooter w when I started messing with gun game more and more and iterating on it. Because in, in Counter Strike, it's actually pretty challenging, and you have to kind of be good at Counter Strike to win. But one of the funny things was that when I first saw a gun game a long time ago, when I was playing Counter Strike, I joined some server randomly in the list, and I played, and it was it was called Gun Game. And um, within like two or three rounds of Gun Game, I kind of accidentally won a, a match, and I was like blown away because I was not good at Counter Strike at all, like classical Counter Strike. And so it was really funny to me to see this like chaotic version of Counter-Strike where it's like Counter-Strike is so serious and like so mm -hmm. skilled to see this sort of like really like flipped on its head version was really neat to me and so uh, in core I wanted to do the same thing rather than it just being pure shooter I wanted to kind of add in layers of stuff that let people who are not good at shooters kind of play as well as the kind of nature of the game like Jordan mentioned is kind of self-balancing because someone who's doing really really well they're getting worse and worse guns so it's getting harder and harder for them right whereas like someone who's not good can Me. use one of the lower lower tier guns can just stay on that lower tier gun and just kind of destroy people and feel like they're amazing you know they feel like they're super good yes. um, because they're just running around destroying everybody and so it can feel um, really, really fun. It can feel really hectic. And it can also feel like, like it could go on for 20, 15, 20 minutes and nobody might win, but everybody can kind of try out different abilities, see all the different guns, and kind of get inspired to make something kind of fun and goofy and core, I hope. Um, that was like my main thing was like low pressure, but like high fun um, and, and, and good bursts. Uh, well, I think but. you've definitely achieved that. Um, as I said, I'm not the best at uh, shooters. I think, I think you do all right. Uh, I've been getting better, I've been getting better. <laughs> um, but I really love Gun Game, um, and I think it is really just not taking it seriously uh, when you're not good. Just being allowed to be silly in a game is, is pretty amazing. Yeah, I don't want to... Um yeah, I don't want to get too uh, boring and too into the weeds with coding um, because that's not everybody's forte and not everybody's interest. But uh, I mean, whoever, if anybody played or if you go back and rewatch the stream a little bit, and I'm sure we might play again at some point today, um, we're going to be going through a lot of cool games, a lot of cool community content. Um, you can kind of see what you can get away with. Like, there is some rough edges right now on, on gun games, still things I'm polishing here and there, but um, I've done a lot of stuff. Um, that, that you know, I would have trouble doing in other engines myself alone completely. Like 100% without a doubt, I would not be able to make this myself in uh, another engine. So um, it's definitely like been, again, like Jordan mentioned, did it kind of in my spare time, or like you mentioned spare time, uh, chipping away at it. It didn't take me a ton of time. It took, it took me very few days to get like 75% of the way, which I think was really cool. Um, and then, you know, I've spent a lot of time just like polishing it, iterating on it, balancing the different weapons and stuff, um, which I can actually bring up a weapon. What's your favorite weapon in the game? Um, well, <laughs> I really like the shotgun because it's the easiest <laughs> the to first, get killed. The first gun, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. it's the one I usually get stuck on the most, but I do have to say I really like the um, slow gun. Oh, slow gun's a good one, too. That's a really good one. Yeah, so um, all of these guns are using a, an object we have in our framework called a weapon, which is kind of like a first-class citizen of the engine or of the, of the platform, basically, that um, it, it takes in a, a bunch of information. You can see over here on the right side in the properties panel. This is probably going to be one of the most important panels to you if you're using Core to, as a creator mm -hmm. um, to check out is properties. Um, so, yeah, you can, you can give, uh, you know, all, all kinds of information to the gun. It, it comes with all these properties, and you essentially kind of fill them in drag and drop style. Like, what do you want them to look like, or how do you want the muzzle flash to look like? Um, so, like for instance, I can I can drag in some of my some of my art templates I've made. Um, and then, uh, if you're just joining us, um, this is Core Live, and we are streaming Core, um, our new platform in uh, Open Alpha. And this is John, one of our amazing character artists, talking about uh, some of the design decisions he made uh, designing Silly Gun Game. Yeah, so let's see here. It's a shotgun. 
Yeah, so, so the weapons are basically like an object type, kind of similar, like they're, they're, they're not just a normal core object, they're, they're a kind of advanced core object that you can drag in. And, and in fact, if you look under um, core content, really quick, let me bring up this tab, right here, if you look under game components weapons, you can actually see like the very first basic setup weapons. Like here's a, if I go to basic, there's like even simpler ones. So like basic shotgun right here, right? It uh, looks similar to mine. Mine's been tweaked just a little bit. But uh, you can see, it basically, if you walk over it, you'll pick it up. So if I, if I play an editor right here, just walk over it, it'll, it'll say, hey, you want to equip this? I can equip it, and then I can fire. Um, basic reloading functionality, all of that's kind of taken care of for you. My game just kind of spawned me back to a spawn point, sorry. Um, if I hop out real quick and we go look at that shotgun, I can very quickly uh, tune it if I wanted to. I could say, you know, I want it to have um, 20 rounds. Um, I could give it a special ammo type if I wanted to have ammo type pickups in the game. Um, and and the reason I the reason I actually went towards Gun Game 2 is like early on, like the weapon the weapon section was like a very strong part of our API and part of our like um, our tools where you could do all kinds of really cool stuff with it. You could make the gun shoot rainbows. You could make the gun shoot sheep or something if you wanted to. You could make a gun that was a cloud. Uh, you, know, you could do anything, really. A gun is like a very like specific concept, but at the same time, if you can like think out of the box, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, one of the guns in Gun Game actually is a, a, a D20, actually. So I'll drag this in. It shoots out. One of these guns shoots out a dice. And every time the dice rolls, um, if you roll a 20, you'll, you'll kill the person you hit. If you roll a 1, you'll kill yourself. It's a failure, so it's sort of like a, a nerdy throwback to Dungeons and Dragons. Um, but it's, it's sort of outside the box, and it doesn't really work like um, you would imagine just a normal gun works. And that's sort of the fun thing about gun game as well, is like subverting expectations of uh, like competitive shooters, I think, in, in some ways. So um, the number you roll with the d20 is the amount of damage you do? Yeah. Okay. And then if you roll a 20, you'll crit, it, you'll crit them uh, and, and nice. kill them, basically. Um, I wouldn't know. I've only gotten it a few times. <laughs> yeah, and then here's, so like the final gun in the game is this uh, golden gun. And it's a banana with a scope on it. So, and it fires, you have one shot and then a 10 second reload. And uh, while you're reloading, a really funny song plays so everyone can kind of find out where you are. They know that the game's kind of coming to an end if they're not careful, right? Um, oh, and then uh, Fusion Pizza asks, can you critical fail too? You can. You can definitely roll a one and die also. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's super simple. And so, you know, some of that stuff is done using Lua, right? Like uh, that stuff, uh, you know, I don't want to fool anybody. Um, you definitely can like take these guns and you can you can kind of add on to them as much as you want. Um, that being said, there's also a tab here called advanced weapons. So if you're looking for something a little more advanced, like a rocket launcher or a sniper rifle that has a scope, for instance, um, I'm gonna just set my lobby time really long here. So yeah, we we have a tab full of like more advanced example guns. So you can definitely um, you can definitely Get, get as crazy as you want right out of the box, kind of, without even having to get into scripting yet. Um, oops. Oh, we have a question um, from Er F. Uh, it says, is the banana rigged? So can you explain a little bit more about the banana gun? Oh, the banana gun. Is it rigged? As in, like, um, the animations and, some, or, and stuff? Or I'm, I'm oh. curious if they mean, like... Um, Good question. Actually, Er F, if you want to... Uh, uh, expand on that. I assumed it was uh, so hard to get a shot with it. That's what they were saying. It must be rigged. Oh, but. is it rigged? <laughs> As in, is it unfair? Yeah. So, uh, no, there's no, uh, I guess I'm, I'm kind of thrown off by the question because rigging in like a classical sense of game development is a whole process, right? In, involving mm -hmm. like a, a content creation program like uh, Maya or 3DS Max where you would use a skeleton to rig. Mm -hmm. um, a mesh or something. In this case, no, it is not. It is literally just a, um, it is just some cylinders and stuff pushed together with a special material to make it look like a banana. Awesome. I'm uh, still waiting on the sorry gun, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I definitely have plans for that one. I was actually working on a hat last night as well. Um, and that's actually one of the main things I wanted to do with Gun Game as, as we launched and got popular and people were able to play it and give me feedback and talk about it was kind of community driven design as I'm really interested in it. Um, I'm really, really like excited about the possibilities of creators being able to work on their game on stream and say, you know, like, 
okay, we just we just set some stats on this thing. Let's let's try it out. They toss a link into chat and. Uh, all their viewers can join in and play with them and mess around and give them feedback right live right there and then you know you can tweak values very quickly like Jordan mentioned the the speed the velocity of development is just like so fast um, and uh, prototyping is so quick that you can just like you could try ten ideas in the same amount of time it would take you just to kind of install other programs <laughs> uh, and that that that's I think shouldn't be lost on people like they should really really just explore and mess around and, and play other games that people are put out and, and give feedback on games that, that other people are putting out. Um. Yeah, I have to say, um, now that the NDA is finally lifted, I'm just so excited to see what um, everyone is going to choose to share and uh, kind of the almost game design, improv, streaming uh, idea is something I am really looking forward to, um, especially since uh, whenever I've streamed uh, to our closed alpha community. Um, everyone in the comments in the chat has been so helpful. I don't think, there's a few things I couldn't have scripted by myself. It mm -hmm. was kind of like a crowdsourced coding <laughs> session, which I think probably to some programmers sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. But um, to me, I was like, yes. Hey, I one of my, one of my favorite streams was having an engineer as a couch person kind of helping me learn more about engineering and learning more feedback. Um, it was really helpful for myself, and actually, other people found it really helpful to like hear, like, "Oh, that's you know, that's how you would do that if you were a, a, a professional engineer and you knew what you were doing. <laughs> you would yes. you would do it a way that I never would have thought of." And and it's like not like it's much more difficult per se, but it's just um, you know, there's ways of thinking about stuff in, in coding, in design, in level in level making, in art um, that you don't really uh, think about until you get exposed to it by other people or like other other professionals. I think. Um, other people who are really talented, and I think that's something like we're going to try and showcase here, right? Like mm -hmm. constantly having uh, cool people, talented people on stream, um, showcasing people who are really talented, talking with them about like what they like about core, um, and having them show off their cool creations. And uh, I think that's also a really unique aspect of core um, compared to some other uh, other setups currently. Um, oh, is this this is the new hat you're this is, working yeah, on? Yeah, this is the new hat I was working on. Um, Amazing. It's all it's kind of kit bashed, like Jordan had mentioned. It's just some different cylinders and spheres. I, I kind of went with a style in gun game that let me um, be able to kind of just like push things together and and, and kind of um, still have stuff kind of look neat. I also, uh, admittedly, I borrowed a lot of hats um, ideas from um, the community. Um, I would look through the community content tab, which is something I can showcase right now. Oops. I would look through the community content tab. And you know somebody had made like a little bird that was really really cute, mm -hmm. a really cool little guy. So let me try and find him. Bird boy, that's him right there, <laughs> made by Muco Mu Mu Mucus Mucusinator. Yes. <laughs> yes, he's uh, one of our alpha creators. He's been around for a while. Um, he's su super nice. So he made this little guy. So I ended up um, using that um, to make a hat that lets you fly. I'm trying to find it. Bird boy hat. GG bird boy hat icon. Is this it? No, this yes. is not it. Oh, and, <laughs> it's one um, of these. For those just joining us, uh, this is Core Live, and we are showing off um, Core, our platform where you can create, share, and play games. Uh, this is John Miller, and he's discussing uh, the game design behind his game, Silly Gun Game. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I would kind of flip through community content early on just to see what people were making, um, seeing all the cool stuff they had. and. Uh, Anytime I found something really awesome, I would turn it into a hat just for fun. I just started adding stuff in, and the hats didn't even have abilities yet. Then they were just purely like um, they purely Cosmetic. actually they're actually kind of disguising a bug I had that I couldn't figure out how to fix myself. So I was disguising it by putting a thing on top of the players' heads, ah. um, and so they could run around uh, and not have this this very obvious bug happening. And um, over time, I decided like, oh, you know, like the shooter is is fun right now. It's pretty good. Um, I want to kind of add something to it. And I don't know what. So I, I decided to kind of give a, an ability to each hat. And then everybody kind of got one randomly. Um, and then after enough time, when we got the persistent stuff set up, I decided to make them persistent. So there's actually a shop now that I've set up in Gun Game. Actually, I don't know if anybody got to see it. Um, it's got very, very temporary UI for now. Um, but this is another thing to kind of show. With the persistent stuff that we have now, if I go to the shop, you can kind of see. You might hear some music. I'm in the shop now shopping. Um, you can look at the different hats that are available. Um, for instance, the, the bird hat, if I want. I can buy it and leave the shop. And that hat lets me fly around. 
And then I think you said you were going to fix that bug that Jordan found yeah, conveniently on stream. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't find where the spawn point was that was um, making him spawn in the wall. I, I, I could have swore he said it. When, he, when I saw it on stream, he said it was right over here on like one of these walls. But I don't see a spawn point here. Yeah, I don't see any spawn points near these walls. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to try and, like, dig in and find why. So, like, that that's another great thing, you know. I'll be able to try and troubleshoot it. Um, so it's not... Um, I would have thought you could have searched for spawn point in the hierarchy. Yeah, I think I can. We, we've spent a long time going over, you know, a number of different decisions on how things... You know, to, to make things as easy as possible and exciting for people coming from either other software or just no software ever. Like you've never used uh, Photoshop, you've never used a, a piece of software, and you want to hop in and start making games because you've always had a passion to do that. Like you've seen things like Roblox, you've watched people stream on Twitch, um, making games and stuff, and you're you're really interested. So we've spent a lot of time trying to like pare down the amount of stuff that's just like in your face when you when you join in but also people who are seasoned developers and who are who are expecting like world class tools and being able to do the things they want to like make their vision they have those things as well right like they have those options but with this kind of opt in complexity that we're um, shooting for here like you you can you can dive in really deep and edit um, little bits of audio together um, using some of Matthew's like really awesome audio components. You can do uh, like really nice visual effects by mixing different visual effects together, diving into the advanced settings, tweaking them and tuning them just to what you want so that they the, the grenade blows up just how you like it. Um, if you want to spend the time, if you don't, you can just drag in the explosion VFX and have something really cool looking right away. So if I just search under content right here for uh, And then if you're just explosion. joining us, uh, this is Core Live, and we are with John Miller uh, talking Boom. about game design and silly gun game. And we are showing off uh, Core, our platform to create, share, and play games, now available at coregames.com. Yeah, yeah, so like, like I was saying, like, if, you, if, you knew, if you knew nothing and you wanted to make a grenade, I mean, first of all, we have a grenade weapon right here that you could mess with so that you could add a grenade to your game if you really wanted to. And then uh, secondly, if you wanted to maybe just do something else that had an explosion, like when you press a button, there's a great VFX level. You can go check out. Jordan flew around it, I think, yes. really briefly. Mm -hmm. And it's open source, so you, you could just download it and literally copy-paste things out of there into your map and you know wire it up to a, a trigger or something um, following one of our great tutorials, the really, really like good intro-level tutorials for people who have never done anything before. Um, and you could make something like really quickly. You know, if I wanted to just take this explosion, again, the properties tab, a little shout out to properties tab here. <laughs> um, there's all these, there's this advanced settings checkbox. You can kind of dig in there. Here, here's basic level. It's just going to do what it does when you press play or when you, when you trigger it. And then if you have advanced settings, you could do all kinds of stuff. Like you could turn off um, everything but the ring, for instance. You could change its color, make it really bright. Uh, you can change the size of it. Um, you can make it local space, which means like if I rotate it now, the ring is going to go off in that angle. I can duplicate it now, rotate it back a little bit, like this. And uh, let's see here. Now I can get this like cool like crisscross effect if I wanted to, right? I can mix and match these guys. Um, I could turn back on the light if I wanted to, so that they both they light up the area when they go off. Right, like that's an added in feature of this th of this particle effect. Um, yeah, so you can really go kind of as deep as you want, um, or as surface level as you want with with trying to um, you know make what you have been wanting to make. And I, I think that's that's that, that's like a really cool part of core is that we've we've uh, we've put a lot of time into like paring down. And, and, and digging in where we need to and adding the stuff we want to that we think is really, really important for people to have access to versus um, you know, just kind of having like everything dumped in your lap it can be really intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, you know, opening up some of these other programs can be really, really challenging. Even for someone who does it uh, uh, for a living, it can be like, whoa, you know, it, some of these concepts are familiar to me, but I, I just don't even know where to begin. And um, I gotta say, Core has never really felt like that to me. I mean, obviously being surrounded by it since, since it started, um, 
you know, I've been exposed to it quite a bit, but even in the beginning when we were just very, very get, getting interest in, in, into it, we really wanted people in the office. There's people in the office who are not um, like generalist game developers. Like Frederick mentioned, like some of our best looking stuff comes from one of our UI artists, uh, Jonathan, who's just like so good at making um, these like really, really cool, visually compelling uh, maps, right? Like I, I don't make super good looking maps. I, I actually had one of the environment artists help me with this map which was a really fun process. But um, it's, it's just like so fun to collaborate, which I think is another big thing I'm excited to see people do. I'm excited to see people make projects together and work on things together. Um, all right, that's all the spawn points. I don't, I don't know what else, what else would have been happening. I didn't see any spawn points in the wall, so I'm going to call it fixed. We'll have to do another play test later to see. Excellent. Um, so I think you have about 16 uh, hats now in uh, Silicon Game? Yeah, so if we go look at the hat store, this is uh, inside here. Oh, let me turn off I this depth of field. I love these. Um, do you have one in particular that you're most proud of? Um, I think so, yeah. I, uh, let, me, let me turn off this depth of field here. Depth of field post process. So here you go. This is another example. We have this like sweet post process volume so that basically lets you apply effects to your camera. So as soon as you go inside this volume, you'll have a blurry camera. And uh, again, I can adjust that on on. I can adjust that here to get uh, the d desired effect I'm going for. Whoa, it's a little fine. It needs to be fine tuned right now. Yeah, and so like um, I can make it more blurry, less blurry. Uh, so in here, let's see. I think the frog hat is one of my favorite ones. It's very, it's not super complex, like technically how I, I programmed it or scripted it. It's pretty simple, actually. Um, the one that was most complex, I think, is this eyeball. And it basically, it lets you, it's like Blink, if anyone's familiar with um, Dota or, or uh, Han or League of Legends or anything like that. It sort of lets you teleport somewhere. Wherever your cursor's at, it lets you teleport to. Um, so actually, if I go into game real quick, and I go to the store and buy it, it, um, it basically searches wherever you click your, your F key, it searches and it basically will find a safe spot on the ground for you ideally and put you there without getting you stuck in the wall or anything like that. And it also makes you face the direction you came from. So if I teleport up here and it's off cooldown, I'm facing the direction I just came from. So you can kind of use it to ambush people. Like if you're shooting at someone up against a wall over there and they're shooting at you, you could basically pop up behind them and surprise them and, and, and gank them. Um, and it, it took me a little while to figure it out, but once I got it going, like, and, and I got a little help from an engineer like asking a question about how I should do some math, you know, it, it, it started working and I, I added a few little like things to it to make it feel good, like making you face the direction you came from and stuff. And it's, I think it's one of the ones I'm more proud of that I figured out mostly on my own. Um, and it doesn't really break too often. You, you still you still can. Um, you can get stuck in a wall sometimes, and I'm trying to fix that right now, like trying to figure out what it is that does that. Um, but uh, yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites. Awesome. And then uh, for those of you just joining us, uh, I'm Tasha, and this is John, and uh, we work at Manticore Games, and we are showing off uh, Core, our platform to create, share, and play games. You can download it. Uh, now at coregames.com, and John is showing off uh, one of the games he's made, Silly Gun Game, and it's pretty incredible. You should go play it. Yeah, so I'm going to do a little, show a little test here. Bring up two clients. So, so yeah, one of the cool features of the tool is we, we have these, um, we have the way you can, you can test multiplayer when you're working on multiplayer stuff. You can test it, and um, you can do that by launching two different clients, and they'll join into the game. Um, so this, this hat that I just bought is this ink blast hat. You can see on his head, it's a little squid. And uh, it basically gives you a little shot you can fire out. And if you hit people, it inks their screen and makes it uh, hard for them to see stuff. Um, other than that one, I have uh, I have another one called, the, the, the alien has a, a gun called like, gravity remove remover. And if you hit people with that, it makes the, basically takes away their gravity so that they, uh, they can't move. They can still do stuff like shoot at you and, and, and uh, use their abilities, but for a few seconds they have no gravity. And so like, these are just like super simple little concepts that I hook together to um, uh, try and, try and like add, to, um, add to gun games kind of like silliness and fun uh, that, you, that you can have with just, uh, just messing around. I think the anti-grav one is the funnest. 
but I've never been able to Hit land anybody with it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually tried to give them like a really big radius to make it easier so it didn't feel so bad when you just like miss and like use your, your cooldown. I have this one called Super Sight, which is fun for people, I think. Um, it puts a, basically a target on them. Oh, that's um, awesome. It puts a target on the person. I, I got to adjust the offset a little bit, it looks like. But yeah, it puts a little target on everybody on the map so you can kind of tell where people are at all times. Um, so I can, I can actually I can fix that right now. Um, yeah. Uh, UI is definitely something you know that's um, I, I'm trying to get better at myself. That's like one of the next things I'm trying to upgrade in gun game is the UI in general and doing a pass on a lot of the stuff like the shop and the, the hats and the abilities and stuff. Um, I haven't had a lot of time yet to um, dig into it, but I'm looking forward to trying to, to, to make it a lot, lot nicer when I, when I get the chance. So let's see here. People can get a little taste of the UI here. Um, so I have this little image on the screen. And uh, essentially what I do is I just, at a high level, I, I kind of just, I spawn one of these per, per player. And uh, I kind of put them on screen wherever the player is, right? Uh, and then they kind of track to the players too through walls and everything. Like mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's actually kind of simple. Um, it seems a little complex, but it's pretty simple. So was there any um, like design decisions uh, during your process for developing this game that you had to choose between like two different implementations of something? Like you had to sacrifice something for like ease of use or? Um, no, I wouldn't say there's like huge, huge issues because I definitely tried to like work within, you know, kind of like within core, like knowing, knowing core and, and, and being really excited about it. I, I definitely tried to stick with like within like what's, um, not what's doable. Like I always try to push the limits a little bit. I think the engineers kind of laugh sometimes because I always go and ask them some sort of silly question like, hmm, could I, you know, like, and I think some of the alpha creators are doing this too, which was really awesome to see where they're like, How, could I put like 20,000 objects on screen every tick or something? You know, and the engineers are like, well, uh, you could try, like, you know, <laughs> and then they would be sometimes pleasantly surprised, I think, by like what they would, um, what they would like encounter <laughs> when we would like open up uh, Discord the next day and go see what someone had made. Um, we would be like, wow, I guess you can put 20,000 objects on screen or something like that, <laughs> moving around cubes, uh, making pixel art and stuff. So um, I definitely always tried to like push the ed bounds a little bit, but the one thing I always liked to settle on was like, um, was the concept I was making, like the design, was it easy to communicate to people? Like mm. they weren't like, okay, I pressed F and I don't know what happened, or uh, maybe it's just because they missed. Like, like tell them that they missed somehow. Um, don't just have it not work if they miss. Mm -hmm. um, or uh, you know, if, if the concept was too hard for me, even if I could um, program it myself, if it was too hard for me to communicate it, like visually, like if I needed special UI, special visual effects that I couldn't quite pull off right uh, myself, then I would kind of steer away from it because I always wanted it to just be um, fun and kind of easy for them to understand what was going on. And there's definitely still some like rough edges that I need to smooth out with like with like hat feedback and things like that of when you miss somebody or when you get hit or when you die. But um, I'm definitely getting closer and closer. I'm going through kind of each hat, you know, in the evening sometimes and just making a hat better than it was the day before. Oh, that's awesome. By adding in, you know, a new, a new sound effect for when you miss or a new sound effect for when your cooldown is up or, or something like that. Um, um, I'm Roloff says, somewhere an engineer is crying, thinking about tens of thousands of objects being added. Yes, uh, exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, we have a question, actually, this is from Heels Goodman TV. When you're editing, how do you move around so quickly? I can oh. only use scroll wheel. Oh, yeah, no, no problem. So up in the right-hand corner here, um, we have basic camera settings set for you when you come in, obviously, just so you can move around. But on a bigger map, it can be a little slow. So you can actually go to this camera speed and dial it to 11 or higher and um, Ooh, you know protein. moving around also while you're moving around this is pretty slow if I hold shift I'll sprint basically my camera will sprint um, or, or you'll basically uh, you'll your camera will move faster and so you can set a multiplier for that so you can have this speed set for something like modeling like working on a, an object right here like orbiting and moving and oh, hey, I'm gonna go work over here but then it's like oh I need to go to the other side of my map I can hold shift and I can kind of move over there really quickly um, and the way I like to move is I like to hold down right click so I can fly, kind of like fly a spaceship, and WASD will then kind of drive you around in space. 
mm. um, with Q and E raising you up and down vertically. Um, is there a way to move the camera slower? This is from me, by the way. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I just totally, <laughs> totally. Um, I think if you like just, um, I think control, control ah, is crawl. excellent. Camera crawl, so you can actually move it like, I can get close to this thing, and then when I need to get really close to fix the Z fighting, I can, uh, oh, God, that's not good. Nope, bad angle. There we go. All right, and if you're just joining us, this is Tasha and John, and we're discussing uh, John's uh, game design choices and his game Silly Gun Game that he made on Core, um, our new platform to create, share, and play games. It's free. Download it at coregames.com. Make something. Tag me. Tag me on Discord or the forums or something, and uh, I'll, I'll check it out um, when I get back from vacation, actually. Um, the one thing I was talking about, I was talking about making the map super fun to like parkour around and run around. And there were some places where like I couldn't really come up with a good way to bridge them, bridge bridge two floors, do areas. So I just added these like jump pads, which are really cool. Mm -hmm. That uh, they kind of just fling you in a direction wherever the arrows are facing. Um, and I actually have some of those here. That's what these gates are. They kind of just they fling you to the next gate. They try to. Sometimes they fling you into the wall. Um, but yeah, those, those really helped make the map more fun. This, this map's gone through quite a few iterations mm -hmm. of design and like layout. Um, there's this big thing in the center that moves back and forth. Um, and this huge pit you can fall off. And if you fall off the map, you'll come back. Don't worry. You'll just take a loss when you and fall. You have some really oh. awesome uh, kill feed messages, <laughs> I have to say. Yeah. I, I tried to add a little, like lots of silliness and flavor. Uh oh, I'm not responding. Oh, no. Ah. I got a bug right there. So Live you can see that, that's a good way to show our show some of our stuff. So we have this thing called the event log, and it'll show you when you do have errors in your scripts. Um, Let's see. We have yeah. um, from Super B Miller uh, asks, uh, how long did the map take to make an estimate? Um, well, I, I made I blocked out the map actually in like an evening, and then I added this smaller section on stream. Actually, I think we have an archived oh, yeah. stream where you can see me block out this upper section of the map um, pretty easily. Um, and I did that just in like 40, 45 minutes. Again, obviously it doesn't have art yet. It's sort of just um, what they call white box, kind of just roughed in, um, because I only had maybe you know forty five minutes to an hour on that stream to come up with it and, and kind of work it uh, into shape. And then I'm hoping to have the same person, Jordan, he's an environment artist, mm -hmm. uh, a different Jordan that was on stream, mm -hmm. um, come and do some art for it later. Um, it's going to be kind of like an assembly line factory. So I kind of started some of that stuff to just, like work prototype it and see what I want it to look like. So I have these little like um, crane arms going. But the full art, like environment art, I mean, Jordan's really fast. He's like a really good artist and he's really fast. So he was able to get through this pretty quickly, the main map, and come up with some ideas. Um, and I, I implemented them. These sad, these sad robot arms just go up and down because <laughs> I haven't messed with them very much yet. Um, and those are all kitbashed out of pieces too. They're not, we don't have like a robot arm primitive in the game, but I definitely made one out of a bunch of cool little pieces, um, sci-fi pieces that we have, gun, gun pieces actually. Um, Oh, Puzzle Box Ent says, killing it, John. You've actually had more compliments that I haven't passed on, <laughs> just so you know. Yeah. Yeah, Puzzle Box. I think, I think that's my old friend, my friend of mine named Jesse. That's really cool. Shout out. Um, awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what else to show or talk about, really, um, other than and without getting into the weeds of something or making, making a little ability or something. But um, there's just. Really, I was going to look at community content to see if there's any new cool little things to add to his hats. Um, a crystal hat could be fun. Think about making a snowman hat, actually. So if somebody wants to make a cool little snowman and submit it, I will probably uh, pilfer it from community content and use it in the game. I have to say, I think uh, one of my favorite things about Core is um, seeing games being iterated Tiny on boats. and um, seeing like the start of Silly Gun Game. And I think. You actually had a prior version to this one, right? Oh and yes. You kind of resurrected oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I had um, I had a version. There's a really funny story that they like we like to tell, tell sometimes. Is like, we um, I made the made the very very first version, and uh, that we had we got like a confetti visual effect that like spawns confetti, and in my um, semi amateur engineering, I was spawning them but never cleaning them up. Every every time you die, it would spawn one. Mm. Like this, and it would spawn confetti. Ah, yes. And uh, 
we played maybe and we were just playing and there's a confetti everywhere and we're like, oh, that confetti is really cool. It's a funny effect, you know, ha -ha. and then didn't realize that they weren't cleaning up until literally the server crashed because we had just like thousands of these confetti volumes everywhere because I hadn't, I hadn't done like my due diligence to clean them up. And so that's always like, that's one of the original stories from Gun Game when I first made it. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's always stuck with me. So that's why actually when you spawn, there's a like confetti now. Uh, in the very beginning, there's a little confetti that launches as a, as a memorial to confetti. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Good Easter egg. Oh, one thing we didn't, I didn't, we know we got to see it is, is taunting. I added taunting in Gun Game as, as well as another design decision. Ah. Sort of fun kind of um, I've trash never talk, used it like because showing I'm not off. Mean or rude? Right, yeah. No, just kidding. Uh, I haven't used it uh, mostly because. I guess I don't quite understand how it works, so okay. now would be the perfect time to ask I you. I will explain it, right? Meow. Um, and if you're just joining us, uh, this is Tasha and oh, John. We are discussing uh, John's game design decisions that went on behind the scenes in Silly Gun Game. We're showing off Core, our new platform um, where you can create, share, and play games. Available now for free at coregames.com. So I had, a, I had like an infinite lobby duration set so we'd never get guns. So I'd turn that off really quickly so I can show you guys some, some stuff real quick. Let's see here. Um, hot tip, when you open your two windows here and you want to manage them, you can hit uh, windows left and right to like shrink them and make them, um, shrink them and set them up in like a specific spot automatically. Let's see here, take this guy windows left, bring up this guy windows right. Uh, show my hat. Uh, okay, let's go. I have a gun, which is cool. Let's go see here. Let's go find myself the flap flap hat. Oh, there I am. So the way taunt works, which I'm gonna be again, I'm gonna be changing it pretty soon to be a little more, a little bit better feedback. Um, basically, if you hit Q, you'll fire out a little taunt bullet, more or less, and they'll be taunted. And now anyone who kills them um, will then it'll then spawn a taunt. Uh, and you'll also go up two levels. So if I kill him while he's taunted, it spawns a salt shaker, um, a little salty. And I went up uh, two levels now. I'm level three, you can see on screen. Um, if I go over here and I taunt and kill him, let's see which one we get. Salt shaker again, okay. Well, that's random right now. Eventually, I'd like to make it where you can buy your taunt also. So you can buy a hat, you can buy a taunt, um, and potentially other things. I'm thinking about adding maybe traps. Um, let me just fly over and go find this guy. Where is he? There he is. Boom. Taunt this guy. Boom. And he got salt again. Ah, man. I'm either unlucky or I have a bug. I'm, you never know, honestly, with me, I feel like. I, I'm, I, I never have good luck with a uh, random. Or, or spawning on the same side of the map, apparently, either. So let's see. Right now, what are the two abilities? Uh, uh, am I going to get it? Nice. Oh, yeah, so I got sheeps. Got little sheepies. <gasps> Those are sheepies in repose made by yours truly. I was going to say, they look so so good. Yeah, yeah. So I, those are those are I, uh, more community content. So like community content really is where the money's at. You know, you just you check in there every day, see cool stuff, add it to your game. Oops. Let's do another one. Oh no! Reload. Salt again. So much salt. Oh, that's really clever. These guys are salty. There's a couple, yeah, I have a couple. I'm gonna add more. It's one, it's one of those things, again, that I, I, you know, I got working as a basic uh, implementation. It's where like, when you get a kill, you'll get this little taunt spawned on them. And um, that takes me back to uh, Han days, if anybody's ever played, played Han. What was this one? More salt, okay. I just, it must be, it's either broken or incredibly salty today. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's, that's another, comp, uh, another, another thing I added to gun game to help. Um, some people were having like a lot of trouble with one gun, or specifically me. I was having trouble with one gun and I was trying to think of a way to let people kind of do something more difficult by having to, because like when you're taunting you have to stand still for a few seconds and, and hit, hit someone with this. Mm -hmm. And once they're taunted, you kill them, you get like a higher level and you kind of get to like besmirch them a little bit, make fun of them a little if you want, in, in a playful way. and um, 
I, I really, I, that, that, that's what I came up with basically, was taunting, it's gonna add a little f a flare on to, your, to your, uh, your killing of your, your friends in gun game. If you follow some of the tutorials, you look up some online resources or YouTube videos, like you can get surprisingly good at Lua, and especially like reading other people's Lua and kind of like copy pasting in the beginning mm -hmm. to get what you're kind of wanting, and then you know, get it 80% of the way, ask a question on the forums, like that's all valid, you know, like there's, that's, that's not the wrong way to do it necessarily. Like, you can totally get where you want to go just by dragging community content, copy pasting some scripts and asking questions. Um, if you have like big vision versus like, I just want to make a shooter or I just want to play games, um, don't be afraid to poke around and, and ask questions on the, uh, the different forums and channels that we have made available, I think, is, mm -hmm. is my, main, my main question or my main uh, closing comment and, and, and ask of everybody who's checking it out right now. now we do um, have an amazing Discord server. It's full of we do. Uh, very friendly, very helpful people. We have uh, Manticore employees as well as um, just incredibly wonderful people who take time out of their day who don't work for us and just want to help other creators. Which is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. We've spent a, a, a lot of time like being getting really excited for this launch and like getting to share core with everybody. Um, everyone here has worked super, super hard to really um, try and give you guys and, and, and gals like the best uh, kind of like 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 Jordan mentioned. It's like a, a game studio in a box, you know. Um, and we're we're super excited to see what you guys make. Oh, bye, bye everybody! <laughs> bye everybody! <laughs> I'm like looking through all these cool games already. Mm -hmm.